headquarters of Ramsey Solutions. It's the Ramsey Show, where debt is dumb, cash is king, and the paid-off home mortgage has taken the place of the BMW as the status symbol of choice. We help people build wealth, do work that they actually love, and create real, amazing relationships. Dr. John Deloney, Ramsey personality, number one best-selling author of the book, Own Your Past, Change Your Future, and host of the Dr. John Deloney Show, is my co-host today. We'll be taking your calls at 888 825 Well, John, I don't get to say this very often at home, and occasionally I get to say it here. <laughs> I was right. I was right. We are in a recession. But barely. <laughs> it's, it's such a wimpy little recession. It doesn't even count. It looks to me like a rounding error. It really is ridiculous. I mean, so the a recession, if you don't know, we've been laughing about this last couple of days because the White House, you know, anytime somebody doesn't like a term these days, they just redefine it. So we made fun of you redefining anxiety. Yes, exactly. and, and And Biden White House came out and tried to redefine what a recession is. And you can't. It's it's econ 101. They teach you in your first week in class in college. I mean, come on. A recession is two consecutive quarters of the gross domestic product. The, which is the adding up of all the goods and services produced in the United States, shrinking. It's a little bit less, two quarters in a row. It receded, like my hairline. Yes. Okay, that's what a recession is. It receded. However, this one didn't recede nearly as far as my hairline. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, this recession is such a joke that it's not even a real recession. It's not even a good one. I mean, as it went down like one and something, one and a quarter, one and a half percent, first yeah. quarter, Last quarter, we got the numbers out just a few hours ago, that it went down 0.9%. That's like a rounding error. This is like getting a ticket for going 71 in, in, in a 70. It's like, yeah. come on, man. I was or speeding. 70 and a half. That's right. I was speeding, but come on, man. 70.9 in a 70. <laughs> oh, this is ridiculous. So now the, the uh, Democrats are all going to run around in circles acting like it's no big deal because it's really no big deal. Uh, and uh, the Republicans are all going to scream at the of top times. of their lungs, we're dying, it's in a recession, <laughs> Biden has crashed the economy, oh my God! <laughs> and none of, neither one is true, by the way. We are in a recession, and yeah. the economy is not good. But it is. This is not like a hurricane recession. This is a a light mist. It's not like the last <laughs> one we experienced. It's in not Q- even a real rainstorm in Q2 when it it plummeted. Oh, in 2020, right? Yeah, we shut down the world, and the economy completely shrunk by like what uh, 25 or 30 percent. It right. shrunk. Yes. During quarantine, right? Because everybody's sitting at home eating donuts, right? Donuts went up, plexiglass went up, but everything else went down, right? And so then they came out of their caves and bought everything in sight, <laughs> and the economy exploded by 35 percent the next quarter. So that was a bizarre thing in 2020. But what we are is we, we are experiencing a slower economy. It's not growing. It's not a time of prosperity for sure. But it is not chicken little. You don't have to get your helmet out. It's just... Point nine. I was telling Rachel the other day, it, it could have been up like point two. I, I mean, the numbers we were getting, there's a lot of precursor reports that come out that you sure. can read. And so I was seeing the indicators. I knew it was going to be basically flat. Yeah. Uh, but it could have been up point two five. It could have been up a quarter of a percent. And then we wouldn't technically been in a recession, which would be like, what, thir- 30.35% difference in where we are, right? <laughs> and it would have been reversed. The, 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 the right would have been saying... But, I mean, it's really a recession. And the left would have been saying, see, look at how wonderful we bailed it out, right? Exactly. Just, man. And neither one is true, okay? It's not the end of the world. Don't let the right tell you that because they're trying to win the midterms uh, based on the recession. It, they need to win it based on something else because there's not much of a and recession. And the left is trying this to is pretend a wimpy math, little misty. <laughs> that math isn't real again. Tiny recession. Okay, yeah. so so in all reality. But but it does suck because we're not booming. Okay, so yeah, so I'm saying. I mean, the economy is not on fire. All In all reality. It's hurting. I'm just a guy with two little kids and stuff's expensive. Stuff, what, like, yeah, what, that's what, inflation. What do I do? That's inflation. Right. This means nothing. Is what That's helpful. Like for you know, just a regular other, guy. Other than the economy is not, it, it's kind of, you know, it's just, it's going for a walk. It's not going for a run. Hmm. Gotcha. You know, and it's, and it's a slow walk. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not had a heart attack in an ICU either. Okay, there so go. there okay. you go. I mean, right. just stretch this metaphor all we can. But but you said something important for the average guy like me. This number means nothing. Means nothing. Other all. than the idea, the economy's slow. 
So turn the news off. The economy's slow. Yes. Okay. But it's not a deep, dark. I mean, I'm 62 years old. I've seen some deep, dark recessions. They're not fun. Right. That's a whole bunch of layoffs. A bunch of businesses aren't doing business, so they don't need people. They're not buying stuff because they're not doing business. So their goods that they produce, they're not producing them because they're not doing business. And so it slows down. It's not good. It's ugly. Recessions are ugly. Uh, but this one's a joke. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> this one's just moderately unpleasant. <laughs> but the uh, 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 this one could get a date. I mean, it's not really ugly, <laughs> right? So, hey, yes, the, the, this is a recession like me and you, and we both ended up getting married. <laughs> this is good. <laughs> this is good. I could get a date. But I do get to tell Rachel Cruz I was right. Hey, this is worth something because she was dogging me on the air the other day because I said it might be up a quarter of a percent. She said, wait a minute, America. He just said he might be wrong. It's like, yeah, Rachel, calm down. Uh, yeah, I could have been wrong, but I actually wasn't. So I'm really kind of basking in this a little bit because I did call it a while back. I thought we were going into a recession and we did. But you, it's said, such, you said a long but it's time such ago. such a joke. It's going to be a minor I could have missed it as easy as I hit it, truthfully, because it's basically flat line. It's just right down the middle. So. Yeah. That that's the thing. So you're going to hear this all over the news, and you're going to hear the Fed increase the interest rates again yesterday to slow inflation, which is stupid on steroids. They're <laughs> screwing around with the economy. They need to leave it alone, let it heal itself. It's going to be all right, but they're going to mess this thing up. And uh, just, man, when you start messing with supply-demand stuff and you start messing and tinkering with, pay no attention to the man behind the curtain. Yeah, well, he can't complete a sentence. It's not a good thing. Okay, so let me ask you this. So let's, let's take this metaphor because that's my bigger concern. Um, you have a, a couple and their marriage, it's fine. Things are fine. And you're going for a walk and you've got the one person who's saying, hey, we should probably talk. Last night, um, you, I, I just felt, and the other person's saying I was in a bad mood and we're going to dig into this. And well, what if we just, we're going to, we're going to try to start, well, let's start doing this together. Let's do this. And we need to go do this. We should probably go sign up for this and let's read this book together. And the other person's saying, Hey, I was just tired. There comes a po point when the intervention becomes worse than anything that was actually going on. Is there a, oh. a moment oh, here? Yeah. So that's a long, long drawn out analogy oh, I, here to I say. got lost in your analogy. Yeah, okay. I now, now yeah. I caught up. I got it. Okay. Is. In other words, you, you know, you're making a mountain out of a mohoil. Can you, can we tinker with this yeah, and the tinker is going to crash the car? Well, yeah, it's not going to crash it, but it could make it worse instead okay. of making it better. Um, you know, it's just. There, there's the first some, rule is do no harm, right? And so. Exactly. Take your hands off. If you don't exactly. know what's going on, take your hands off for a second. The beautiful thing about capitalism is it has a real tendency to heal itself if you leave it alone. Okay. Like crooks, they don't make it because people quit doing business with them. Why? Because they're crooks. They're crooks, yeah. Or Even, if, eventually, if your product is breaks on you, yeah, you quit if buying. You, if, it, you, right? if you if you if you if you make a crappy car, eventually people call it a Pinto. I mean, you know, I mean, <laughs> you know that that's eventually the marketplace will punish you for being stupid, and it will cleanse itself. But and it does that with cycles as well. But God Almighty, we have to mess with it. This is the Ramsey Show. Look, I love real estate, and I want you to have a house, but I don't want a house to have you. That's why you need to get in touch with Churchill Mortgage to make sure you do this right. These guys are awesome. They'll help you get on a smarter mortgage plan because they're committed to doing what's right for you. That means they check in every year with free consultations to help you stay on the right plan. They show you how to save money and interest so you can build wealth faster. They walk you through the total cost of your loan so you can make the best choice. Basically, they care. That's why we call them Ramsey Trusted. You can achieve debt-free home ownership and Church Hill is here to help. Go to their site, churchillmortgage.com slash Ramsey to start your approval or get more information.
Dr. John Deloney, number one best-selling author, host of the Dr. John Deloney Show. Ramsey Personality is my co-host today. Open phones at 888-825-5225. How many times have you found yourself saying, one day, when thinking about a goal that you have, one day I'll be able to buy a house, one day I'll be happy with my career, one day I won't have to battle with anxiety, one day I will set some boundaries. Stop waiting around. Whatever your one day is, you need to start right now. And that's why we created the SMART Conference. SMART Conference is a one-day event where we will tackle all the areas of your life. And guys, let's face it. We could all use that kind of boost right now. You'll hear from the nation's top thought leaders on money, career, mental health, relationships, marriage, and leadership. The event is hitting the road and will be coming to Dallas, Texas on Saturday, October 22nd. It is already 60% sold out. Event passes are selling fast. The VIP and Platinum are gone, and you can get general admission still for $39. So Dr. John Deloney will be speaking, Rachel Cruz, Ken Coleman, all number one best-selling authors, George Camel, Christina Ellis, best-selling author. I'll be there. I am sold a couple books, too, and I had a couple ideas in my life. Not to mention our friends and leadership experts from Life Church. Life Church is uh, Craig and Amy Groeschel. They're going to be speaking on marriage. And uh, let me tell you guys, there's big surprises all day. This is a day-long event. You will leave inspired and smarter. It's Smart Conference, October 22nd. Uh, so jump online at RamseySolutions.com slash events. Get your event passes right now john is with us to start off this hour in cincinnati hey john how are you good how are you dave better than i deserve what's up so uh, i'm going to give you a quick background um before i ask my question so i'm 28 um i have all my debt paid off except for my house and my house is about to be paid off here in about five weeks great um i've i've been working a ton of overtime. I've been doing it going gazelle intense for about three years now, working average 70 hours a week, had a baby with my wife. And uh, so my question really is, is about what kind of advice you could give a young person like me that's in my position, because I'm kind of lost uh, on a path and I don't really have a path and I'm, I'm starting to be burned out. Um, so just looking for some advice. Sounds like you got a path. Sounds like you got several. Sounds like you're a new father and you're a husband and you're working to pay off some debt and you're working a professional job. Are none of these paths, are you not feeling a certain way? Sounds like you got some pretty pretty important, pretty cool what, path. What, what path is missing? I don't know. I just felt like I uh, worked so hard and now that I'm about to cross this finish line with paying off my house too, at such a young age, I just feel like I'm I'm really burned out, and I can't light the fire back in me and get me going again. Okay, number one, you you don't need to light a fire back in you. You're fine. Yeah. Um. Uh, number two, we don't tell you to we don't tell folks to do what you've done. Uh, once you reach to baby step four, we don't say gazelle intense anymore. We move from intense to intentional, and work to systematically more of a marathon than a sprint be putting money in your retirement, be putting money in your kid's college and systematically paying off your house. But 70 hours a week to stay gazelle intense to pay off your house is not what we tell folks to do. It's okay that you did it. You didn't do anything wrong, but uh, no wonder you're burnt out. In other words, you, you fried your, you fried your brain, man. You put it on egg and put it on the skillet on the, th- uh, on the dadgum uh, stove. So, you know, l- let's just say, Hey, let's, uh, work 40 hours a week. Uh, systematically save for retirement, save for my kids' college, increase my generosity, and... Uh, go on put, a vacation? Yeah, go on a vacation, put your feet up, rock the baby. Oh, my gosh. I mean, what's wrong with that number? Um, what, are, what, are you, what, what are we missing here? You need a new goal? Is that what you're saying? No, I... I yeah, sort of a new goal. Um, I just feel like after I've done this, I'm I'm just kind of settling, and I don't know if that's what I'm. No, to you're not settling. No. Just- so okay, so you've you've seen the the marathon pictures where the uh, runner comes across the finish line and collapses at the marathon. Yes. You see the finish line, and you're about to cross it, and your body is failing you as it should after you run an Olympic uh, marathon, and you're thinking, "What workout can I get in tonight? Because I don't want to waste this evening." And what every coach and trainer on the planet would say, you need to take a couple weeks off. Take some time. 
I see. Rejuvenate, relax. Your next goal and mission and purpose and thing, it'll come to you, man. That's just who you are. You're a driven guy. You're going to go make it happen. You're not settling. You are leaning into rest. You're leaning into peace. There's a reason why you did all this. It's so you can put your feet up and go, whew, so you can give like crazy. You're there now, and you're going to have to practice what that feels like because you've never experienced that. Yeah, it's an you, it's all new feeling. What what we're saying is is there is as much dignity in running a marathon as there is a sprint. And right now, you I think see. the only thing that is that is worthy is sprint. So if I'm not sprinting, I'm settling. I see. And you're playing a much different, longer game. Yeah, play the now you're playing long ball, man. Yeah. Okay. Different game, right. and, and I'll tell you the key to all Olympic workouts is not the workout program it's the rest program it's teaching these olympic driven athletes to put their feet up to rest to take get some peace so that when they get back into the game they are full in i'm gonna throw a book at you all right there's a an old book a buddy of mine named bob buford wrote called halftime and the premise halftime. of the book halftime by bob buford the premise of the book is that men in particular spend the first half of our lives in acquisition mode the second half okay. in the in in search of significance. Now this is in the case of a guy with a life well lived, okay? But what happens sometimes to men and you're not a candidate for this, but what what you've observed with maybe friends that are a little bit older than you or I have when I was in my 20s or thir- late 20s early 30s is a guy will kind of be winning the quote success game and it's not it's not fulfilling because acquisition doesn't fulfill there's only so much of that you can you know eat enough lobster it tastes like soap and so there's only so much gathering of stuff that is fulfilling after that you need significance and so where you're going to find great joy and depth and soul refreshment is in working for significance rather than uh, acquisition, because what you've done so far is an excellent job on the acquisition stuff. I mean, crap, man, you knocked out your house. You're 28 years old. You killed it. But now you got to have something that's a little, little deeper, a little more philosophical, a little more spiritual. Uh, and if and the guys that don't do that, and again, I'm not accusing you of this, but just for the rest of your edification, what happens to guys is they just keep going and going and going and going. Think acquisition, 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 and then they get all this stuff and all these these accolades. And it's still not enough, and so that's when we then that's when they have what we call a midlife crisis. They go get other wives and other yeah. homes. Yeah, other they towns go out, you know, the red convertible and the blonde secretary, and right, here right. we go, you yeah. know, and so or whatever the whatever the stereotype right, right. is of a midlife crisis, right? So, um, uh, no disrespect to you, blonde secretaries, but the uh, <laughs> but the uh, uh, oh my gosh, but the you, that's what happens yeah. is you don't if you don't intentionally change that gear mm-hmm. at that at that apex. Um, you're, you're, you will fill it up with the wrong stuff. Here's a fun uh, adventure you and your wife can go on. Um, go t- take a half-day retreat in the next week or two and ask her this question. Who do we want to become now that we've done all of this? Another half-day serve soup at the homeless shelter. There you go. And let's get up three or four books that we want to read together over the next few months as we start thinking about who are we going to become. And also, let's make service a regular part of our marriage, of our giving back to our community. That'd be incredible. Yeah. And, yeah, that, it is it is the best part of life, and it's the best part of money. Yeah. Actually, it is the live like no one else so later you can live and give like no one else you got to do that second part yeah the live and give part you know enjoying things and continuing to embrace things and do things and so forth and um you know i was with a group of guys last night um one of the guys said hey i want to ask you guys some questions well, can we gather up and i just yeah i'm always in for that that's fun and um real philosophical thing kind of thing on the back porch right but it was this whole this whole idea that you know what we what, what are we going to do now that matters? Well, you know, and man, that's just you, you got to live a life with that kind of intensity, yeah. that kind of intentionality. That's a different thing. That's where you are, man. You're in a really good place, and your question is not weird. No, it's an actually a very very good question and a very good place that you're in, that you find yourself in. But be intentional about the next steps.
If you're looking for ways to update your home without blowing the budget, I've got it. For years, I've been telling you about our friends at Blinds.com. Blinds.com makes it simple to shop top quality blinds, shades, and interior shutters from home with easy online ordering and free shipping. With Blinds.com, there's no need to renovate your entire home. Just change out what's on your windows with upscale choices like faux wood blinds, cellular, and roller shades or even outdoor shades. Plus, Blinds.com guarantees the perfect fit, whether you do it yourself or you have them measure and install everything for you. Shop their latest looks and see how much you can save at Blinds.com today. The easy and affordable way to make your home more beautiful is Blinds.com. Dr. John Deloney, Ramsey Personality, is my co-host today. Nicole is in Orlando. Hi, Nicole. How are you? Hi. Thank you so much for taking my call. Sure. What's up? So I'm new to the Dave Ramsey. I just heard about you guys um, about a week ago. I've been living under a rock. Um, but I um, I uh, looked through the baby steps, and I'm kind of coming up to, uh, with an issue right now. Um, so my family, um, I was living in Los Angeles, California. I sold my home, and with the profits, I was able to purchase a home outright in, uh, well, we live in Kissamee, Florida, where I have a, I take a, I took a position that now has doubled my income. Fabulous. And so, Life right? is and rough. So, you have a paid-for house and a doubled income. See you, California. Yes. <laughs> so we are really, needless to say, we feel incredibly blessed. Yeah. Um, but the problem I'm having right now is, um, you know, we with the home, uh, we still have about $100,000 left over. We have about 150000 between cash in the bank, and we also invested in gold. But my problem is my new employer, we don't have a 401k, and I don't qualify now for a Roth, so I'm kind of getting a little nervous as far as what, what to invest and what's the best way to grow my money. Um, I'm 30 years old right now, and what So let me I get this straight. And, You're 100% yeah, yeah. debt-free. You don't owe on your yes. house. You doubled your income. Yes, sir. I don't think there's anything to be nervous about except where we're going to throw the party. I mean, you are really doing it. This is great. It's good oh, for uh, you. Yes. So um, not, uh, to, not to make yes. light of you or anything. But Dave, I might be wrong, but should she buy a bunch more gold? <laughs> I, I did buy some more, but no. not like No! Not no. no we're, he, he's being facetious. Being don't listen to him. Moron. Don't buy gold. Don't listen to him. We tell people not to buy gold. <laughs> no. So here's the thing. You are, you are what we call baby step seven. Okay? okay? All the baby steps lead you out of debt while building an emergency fund, while starting your retirement, while starting your kid's college. Do you have kids that you need to save for college for? Um, yes, I have one daughter. She's 13, and we have about 20000 which was kind of our, yeah. my husband and I agreed that was kind of our max as far as what we wanted to contribute. Put a little skin in the game, but she also has to have some skin in the game. Yeah, like 150000 Okay. Uh, a lot <laughs> of skin your daughter's going to be putting in there. But anyway, there's, yeah, I'm probably doing a little more than that if uh, I'm going to argue with you guys on that. Even if you're not going to pay for 100%, that 20000 ain't going to touch it. Nope. So, um, you need to yeah. go price of college. That's a it's going to blow your mind. But <laughs> Anyway, the, right. uh, so here's the thing. You're at what we call baby step seven, which that step is build wealth and give. So I want you to make sure you're, you're doing all you can for retirement, all you can for the kids' college. A good way to do that is to sit down with a good financial advisor. You can do a what's called a backdoor Roth IRA, mm -hmm. and you can put 8000 a year, 6000 a year, 7000 a year, wherever you are in the process there, into that each uh, is your husband working outside the home? Uh, no, he's actually a paraplegic, so I'm the sole income provider okay. for then, family. But you can, but you can do a spousal IRA and a regular IRA, and they can be Roth IRAs, and you can backdoor them. Okay, what a backdoor okay. is? It's called a backdoor Roth. What you do is you open a an after tax traditional IRA and instantaneously roll it to a Roth. 
Okay. Gotcha. I, I have a income that far exceeds the limits and I do those every year. Okay. So it's perfectly legal. It's, it is a loophole, but it's perfectly right. legal and moral to do that. And you put it in okay. good growth stock mutual funds like your kids' college should be in. So we have, we're not in the investment business around Ramsey, but we have a group of investment advisors that we have vetted all over America, many different brands, meaning they work for different companies, but they all share a couple of traits. One, they have the heart of a teacher, which you want to learn about this stuff. And yeah. two, uh, th they are going to give you advice that's consistent with what you hear around here. And they're, we call them smart vesters. And you are, you're the smart vester. They're the smart vester pro. So you click on that at RamseySolutions.com. It'll give you a, a list of three or four in your area. You can interview all of them and decide which one you like which one you feel mm -hmm. good about. And you can do your Roth, backdoor Roths there. You can soup up your kid's college fund a little bit in your 529. Let's get that thing moving a little bit better than it is. Um, mm -hmm. And you can do some other type of investing beyond that, which you're going to be able to do with your wonderful income because you don't have any mm -hmm. bills. Way to go. Mm -hmm. And they're going to tell you what I'm going to tell you, which is don't invest in gold. It's a bad investment. It's had a bad rate of return <laughs> over the last 70 years. It's averaged about 1.2%. Gotcha. Okay. Now, it's had some big years that the gold bugs like to talk about, but it's had a lot of down years, and um, it, it is basically a um, it's a commodity, and commodities are not things I invest in. So you can do whatever you want, but that's what I would do. I have some gold cufflinks, and that's it. <laughs> Um, the, um, yeah, so yeah, that, that's what I would do. The last thing you can do is what's called a, if you want to write this down is a low, you got back door, you got to write down for Roth. The other one is mm -hmm. a low turnover mutual fund. And so I do a lot of those now too. And what that is, is they don't sell the stocks inside the mutual fund much. Mm -hmm. So a low turnover ratio would be like a 4% turnover ratio, meaning only 4% of them are sold in a year. So there's hardly any of the gains are activated for taxes. So it works kind of like if you buy a single stock. Let's say you bought a stock of Home Depot for 50 bucks. I don't even know what Home Depot goes for, but let's say you bought it for 50 bucks. If it goes up from 50 bucks to 70 bucks, you don't pay any taxes on that $20 gain until you sell it. Gotcha. And because they're not selling the stocks inside the mutual fund, there's low turnover. It's growing like that stock was growing. And you don't pay taxes on it until you sell it because they're not selling it. Now, if the mutual fund gotcha. turns over all the time, it's activated. Even though you didn't sell the mutual fund, it's still activating the gains, and you have to pay tax on it every year. So you want this is capital gains growth, and it's a good way to do that. Another excellent way to get at that is just a uh, – a no-load uh, S&P 500 fund will put you in that same thing. Almost all of those are low turnover ratio. So just check for the turnover ratio or talk to your SmartVestor Pro about that. Um, I do some through my SmartVestor Pro, and I just occasionally just dump some into a into an index fund. Uh, and what I'm typically doing there, Nicole, you do whatever you want, but I'm a real estate goob, so I'll just use that fund, build it up till I got enough money to buy a piece of real estate in it. And then I'll cash that in and go buy some real estate. And it, it's if I keep it longer than a year, it's taxed at capital gains rate instead of ordinary income rate, which is half. 15% for you, 20% for me. Versus but just on the growth. Only on the growth. Yeah. 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 So, um, but it's an excellent vehicle for, uh, because you get, you know, a better tax deal if you hold it a year and you don't pay taxes. If you, hold, if you just keep holding it, it just keeps growing. So I remember back in the early to mid 80s, Dave, uh, my dad took me down when I started my little lawn business and he took me down to open up a savings account. And my interest rate was 11, 12, 13%. We're coming out of this that bad inflation. I remember it. And I remember circling back in college That's so cute. and getting a savings account and it was one. And I remember thinking the bank was ripping me off and I didn't understand about yeah. economics. Can we expect with inflation and with the Fed rates that we can go down to – normally, we'd put money in an index fund. we put it in a money market account. Can we expect to go down to our banks and just get these elevated rates that we haven't experienced the last decade? Well, Fed was running uh, – went as high as 18, uh -huh. the Fed rate did in uh, 1982 mm -hmm. and under Jimmy Carter, and it was out of control. Yeah. And so the Fed the – Fed, that's an example of – government tinkering with the economy that they shouldn't have been. So they, they ran the Fed rate up. I mean, and what the Fed funds rate is, is what one bank borrows from another. Right. So it's their cost of money. So if they pay more to borrow money from another bank to loan to you, then they're going to charge you more. Right. 
So interest rate drives interest rates up uh, to the consumer. So the Fed funds rate's a big deal. Um, but no, I, you know, you'd have to say I think interest rates in general, the interest rate environment is going to go through the roof again. And um, I got to tell you, man, it got it got Carter booted out of office for right. sure. That and the Iran hostage crisis cost him the presidency. Mm-hmm. And he was a sitting president one term. Yeah. And uh, that's unusual. Yep. And it, it cost him that for sure. It was political suicide to, to do that. So, no, I mean, 6% Fed rate or, you know, I mean, a 6% mortgage market is not a, it's not a high mortgage market. No. No, it's not, it's, not, it's not anywhere near that kind of numbers. So, no, you're not going to see a savings account that's going to pay much more than <laughs> 1 2%. or 2% in, okay. in, in your coming years. This is The Ramsey Show. John Deloney, Ramsey personality, is my co-host today. Thank you for joining us, America. Sylvester is in New Haven, Connecticut. Hi, Sylvester. How are you? How you doing, Mr. Ramsey? How you doing, Mr. Deloney? Better than we deserve, sir. How can we help? How you doing today, sir? I'm, I'm calling on behalf of me and my wife. Um, we just have a question. We would like to know, should we sell our home right now due to inflation because it's up to pay off our debt? and move into an apartment for two years and just try to save for another house. It's my last choice if you can't do it any other way. So uh, how much do you owe on your home? Uh, um, right now we owe about 114000 What's it worth? Right now about two oh five. And how, how right much there. debt have you got not counting the house? Um, the debt is seventy k. Uh, forty forty is student loans, which is my wife, and she has another fifteen in personal, and I have ten personal, so we're around seventies. No car debt. Uh, no car debt. We own a we own our car, but we actually need another car because we have two children. Yeah. So what? Uh, what's your car worth? Um, uh, it's a. Uh, <laughs> um, um, the insurance won't they consider it a total loss, so they'll give us probably six thousand for it. They won't fix anything on it, so we'll get six thousand of the of the. The one that's the one that totaled. What's the other one worth? No, we don't have one. We need an additional car. Oh, so you have one that you're, yeah. you're out of cars right now. Yeah, we just have one car, one car, but we need another one. If we sell, we'll be probably able to get another car. I got you. But, okay, so what is yeah. your uh, what's your household income? Um, honestly, um. I I make over six figures with three incomes. Um, so my wife brings in maybe um, right now she's about to start a new job, which is around sixty. So she averages maybe sixty, eighty thousand a year right now. She's trying to find. So you have a household income of like two hundred thousand dollars. Uh, at least one eighty. Yeah, that's yeah. what I'm thinking. Yeah. So yeah, um, at least. no, you don't need to sell your house. Hmm. How long? Um, and your wife? Your wife's not been working until recently. Uh, yeah, she just stopped. She's been, you know, job searching, looking for the right job that, you know. How long has she been out of work? Um, maybe the past two months. And, you know, she just needed me time dealing with the children and just, you know. Yeah, no, I'm just, I'm I'm not picking on her. I'm just trying to find out where these, where this math is going. So basically you've had over the last two or three years, a household income of a hundred to 180,000, somewhere in there. I would say I was I I just got my highest paying job this year, so you could say before that was W two was making one thirty five together because we owe every year in okay. taxes, yeah. and now we're at one eighty. Yeah, well, New Haven, Connecticut, two hundred thousand dollars for a house is not a fancy house. No, it's a condo, so yeah. that's why she 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 would like to sell, take the game, be debt free, uh, move into an apartment with our children for two years, and hopefully. Buy another home. You know, we're just asking for recommendations because yeah. we spoke to other financial advisors, and it's like, uh, use your line of equity. Yeah. Um, you know, it's up to you. So don't use really that don't financial know, advisor. He's an idiot. Yeah, fire that person. 
So here, here's what you uh, need to do. I'm yeah. going to pick. Can I pick on you? Is that okay? Absolutely, sir. Okay. You make too much money to be this broke. Y'all are disorganized, out of control, okay. and overspending. You make a lot of money, especially if we get jack it all the way up to 180000 180000 you'll be able to pay off 70000 in about nine or ten months. Right. But, you know, I, granted, you've not made 180 through this whole story while you no. got into this mess. But the way you knock this out is not selling the house. Selling the house is the, the debt is not the problem. It's the symptom. That's okay. right. And you're treating the symptom when you sell your house, I'd rather you treat the problem, which is you guys get on a tight budget, no eating out, no vacations, no life, and you pay all of this off in nine or 10 months. I mean, how would it be, feel to be 10 months from now, have no debt, but your house? That'd be great. That's, that's the ultimate plan. Yeah. That's and the then guess plan. what you can do? Figure it out. Yeah. Then that right. condo goes up in value for the next couple of years while you're saving some more money to add with that condo and you can move into a little better house, which is really what your wife's trying to pull off here without dealing with the fact that you guys are overspending like you're in Congress. But you got to deal with that or dude, you're going to be broke your whole life. You can't out earn stupidity. I tried it for a long time. <laughs> and you can't outlive disorganization. And I've tried that for a long time. There's a lot of stress in this story, isn't there, Sylvester? Yeah, my wife is extremely stressed. That's why yeah. the job search. And the yeah. job hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. And, and hey, you're stressed too. Well, no, you're working. Honestly, I'm fine. I'm fine. Honestly, it's my wife. I care about her and I love her. I just want to. Right, but hold on. If you're fall if you, on your sword if you want, but dude, the numbers you're giving me are stressful. If you're working three jobs, you you, you mm -hmm. think you kind of know what you're making, what you're not. That's a that's hard, right? And you're 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 you got you're strong. You you're, you you go to work. You work hard. There's some ego there, but it's okay to say, man, I want to live a more peaceful life too. Yeah, if you had right. no payments and all your money was doing exactly what it was told, you'd be breathing deeper. And one more step. You you mentioned your wife's got some debt and you got some debt. If you were so in sync with her that this was y'all's debt and this will be y'all sure. working together on getting out of this thing. And then your marriage, is, you're going to look up in a year after grinding this thing out and y'all will have accomplished a big hard thing together. And then your marriage is going to be in a place that you didn't, you don't remember it being. So here's the deal. You're a good guy. I can tell by talking to Absolutely. you. Absolutely. You're a solid guy. Um, and uh, I think you guys are almost ready to do the smart stuff. If you are really ready I'll give you Financial Peace University, the nine-week class for you to go through. You and your wife go through it together. Find a local church and plug into it or get get on, with an online group and go through it with your online group and then watch the videos and do the budgets and do the stuff we teach you. And in literally in nine weeks, I can show you how this debt should be gone in nine months and both of you be on the same page. We can show you how to do it. We've shown 10 million people how to do it. If I give that to you for free, can you get her to go along with you and the two of you do these lessons together? Well, she's on the phone now, if, if you don't mind clicking in. Okay. What's her, what's her name? Her name is Shay. Does she know about all this discussion we've just been having? Yes. Sherry. Shay. Shay. Uh, yes. Hey, I'm going to give you guys Financial Peace University if you'll promise to actually go through it together. Will you break that promise? Yes. If you guys will do this, we can show you how to get out of debt in nine or 10 months, 12 months max, and you keep the condo, let the condo go up in value, and then you can move over and jump into the better house later on. That's about a three-year plan or so. Does that sound good? Sounds good. Okay. You guys make too much money to be this freaking broke. You agree with that? Absolutely. All right. You hang on. Austin will pick up, and we'll help you guys get through this. You're the, you're the kind of people we like to help. Hey, she's on the phone. This is bad. This is good. This is good news right here, John. I know, and I love, man. If, I'm smiling ear to ear. I love talking to husbands who have run up against. Like I'm trying. I've tried to flex my way through this, and I need to go ask somebody for another plan because my plan of just go 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 is not working. And I'm looking around. I got a stressed wife. I got stressed kids. I got debt. 
maybe maybe we can come up with a scheme to get out of this, and then I'm going to go to somebody and say, hey, I need some wisdom. And you say, I got a path for you. That's I called, got a path for that's you. That's called a good man. It's called wisdom. That's a good man. He's she married good, well. He's a good man. Golly, it's good. And she's a good lady. She, yeah, jumped, yeah, yeah, she yeah. jumped right in there. I mean, we didn't have to drag her kicking and screaming. So this, this is the kind of folk that turn these things. They'll be on the stage doing a debt-free scream in a year. Yep. And um, in, in five years, they'll be telling me their baby steps millionaire. Oh, for sure. They're on their way. Because they make 180000 Let me just tell you, man, New Haven, Connecticut, not a cheap place to live. Nope. So um, that's that's a big market there. So uh, it's, a, it's a nice market. But, um, yeah, wow, wow. Very, very cool. And I love to hear those three. I'm working three jobs, and I'm making it happen. Here, here, I love it. Yeah, it's just so interesting that 98% of winning at this stuff is just deciding to do it. Yeah. Do you know, exciting. I'm not going to live like this anymore. So I was hiking the other day. Uh, my wife and I were on our anniversary trip. I was hiking up a hill, and I think mental health, I think financial health, physical health, I think if we distill it all down, it comes into t- to three words. Do it anyway. Just do it mm. anyway. It's hard. I need a plan. Just go do it. Do it anyway. Go do it anyway. Do it anyway. I don't want to have a conversation with my wife. Go, have, go do that, it anyway. That old Art Williams talk. Just do it. Just, yes, just, just do it. Just do it. Do it. Just Get on the do right way. Love it. I love it. This is good stuff, man. Good stuff. Thank you guys for joining us. Ah, thanks to Austin, Ben, Zach, Andrew, James, and Will in the booth. This is the Ramsey Show. Dave here. You can find all of our shows with the Ramsey Network app on your smartphone. It's the only place to listen to the entire back catalog of episodes. Download the Ramsey Network app in your favorite app store today. Ramsey Solutions, it's the Ramsey Show, where debt is dumb, cash is king, and the paid-off home mortgage has taken the place of the BMW as the status symbol of choice. We help people build wealth, do work that they love, and create actual amazing relationships. Dr. John Deloney, number one best-selling author, host of the Dr. John Deloney Show, Ramsey Personality, is my co-host today. Open phones at 888-825-5225. Lindsay's with us in Columbia, South Carolina. Hi, Lindsay. How are you? Hey, Dave. I'm doing great. How are you guys? Better than we deserve. What's up in your world? Yeah. So I just recently got engaged and my fiance and I have been following your baby steps for a few years now. We are debt free. Um, So now we are now planning and budgeting for the wedding, which we will be able to cash flow. Phenomenal. Um, But yeah, um, but I, I am finding myself having a lot of guilt um, over spending the money on the wedding. Um, We are both anticipating we are going to need new cars soon. We're at the phase of our life where we'd like to start saving for a down payment. Um, I don't want to jip myself of the wedding um, that I want. But I am having shame about wanting to spend so much money. Well, I mean, it, it, it wouldn't be shameful or guilt-inducing unless it is too much money. And and the way we, how do we say too much money? It's in relative terms to your situation. Okay, if you make two right. million dollars a year and you want to spend fifty grand on a wedding, that's not too much. If you make forty thousand dollars a year and you want to spend fifty grand on a wedding, you're crazy. So, what is it you <laughs> want to spend on the wedding? Uh, I think it's going to be about twenty-five to thirty grand tops. Nice wedding, and what is your what is your income? Uh, household income is probably about ninety thousand. Well, there's not a household yet, but yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. All right, but yeah, that would be uh, the numbers we're dealing with anyway. So, mm-hmm. well, the average household income in America right now is about seventy thousand, and the average wedding is about twenty-five thousand. Okay. Okay. Now, so that that's the average, but we do want to keep in mind that normal is broke, so we don't necessarily want to aim at average. But the point of that is, is you're not completely out of control, but now you start to make value judgments and go, every five thousand dollars I cut this accelerates the other goals. 
Mm -hmm. And so it's the trade-off that you're going to make the rest of your life. If I spend money on A, I don't have it for B. It's called opportunity cost. And that's what I'm struggling with. Like, I don't want to have the wedding. And then what I I want you to do is set a set a number, stick to that number and never struggle again. Okay. Now you should, uh, I, I do want some of this negative emotion to keep you from overspending your budget. Mm -hmm. And so what would I do if I woke up in your shoes? I would probably say, you know, we're, I just don't feel okay about 25. I'm because you're not feeling okay about it, by the way, I'm kind of, kind of keying off of that. Okay. Mm -hmm. It wasn't like you're going, this is because let me just tell you the difference in a $20,000 wedding, $25,000 wedding. No one that visits will know. (laughs) (laughs) That's a napkin arrangement. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, you know, that's the chairs you chose for the reception. You know, I mean, oh my God. So, and, and then when you start laying out the actual wedding budget, you know, so you put a big number on it, and then you say, based on that, I'm going to spend X on the uh, videos and pictures. I'm going to spend Y on the dress. I'm going to spend Z on the uh, reception. I'm going to, you know, and every one of the L, the band, the DJ, the the preacher, the whatever, and you just line item this out like it's a project because I'm sorry, darling, but it is. Mm -hmm. And then you stick to that. You say, okay, I've got this much budgeted for catering. And they go, well, you can't get the sushi if you do that. Well, then we won't be having sushi, darling. So no is a possible answer to some of these questions. And so, um, but the, the, the thing that will give you great peace and no guilt is if you'll set a number, detail it out, and then stick to it, You'll never think about it again. But if it's constantly floating around and you feel like then I can buy happiness or I can buy joy for $3,000 more, you're not going to find it there. It's not there. And it is a, it's a wonderful thing to have big, we have big parties. We're, Ram, we're Ramses, man. We like to party. All of our weddings were huge. <laughs> we love big weddings and everybody dancing and, and good food. And man, it's a fun time. And it is one day and it's gone. It is. It does evaporate, but so is travel, or so is other things we spend money on. So, right. but there is and no. Do cor- you, you do know there is no correlation between the size of the wedding budget and the success of the marriage, though, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> if anything, there might be a negative correlation. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, for sure. Well, I'm just glad we're not going into debt for it, but I do have that guilt. No, I, that, that, you know, if, you don't have to say I'm not glad. I have. I, I chose. Yeah. Not to go into debt for it. Mm-hmm. You, you're, you're like being a grown up and stuff here. You're, yeah. Is is the person you're about to marry? Are they guilt tripping you, or saying, no, "Man, if we were no, doing a wedding, like, a wedding like this, like where's this guilt coming from?" Uh, me, um, I guess because we we have worked so hard the last few years to pay off our debt, and now we're in a finally in a really good financial spot. And so are you kind of a tightwad, both- and you have trouble enjoying money. Yes. Um, and, and I just, I'm worried that after the wedding, our cars are going to go and we're going to need They are. To they buy are. Hundred percent, hundred percent chance. And you on know the, what? On the honeymoon, one of them's going to fry. In 15 years, you're, it'll be a funny footnote to a great wedding. Yeah. Let this yeah. be a great experience for you to, you worked so hard so that mm-hmm. you could honor this, I like that. this cool ceremony, right? That's why you're going to work so hard after this wedding to... You're going to get new cars so that you don't end up on the side of the road. You're going to work really hard to pay off your house so that you can give recklessly to people in your community. You're going to do these things so that, right? And you all have worked really hard to get right here. I would challenge you to dial it down to 20. Absolutely. 18.5. Come up with a number. Yeah. And then just just lock it in and go, based on that, I've got to do the dress this way. Based on that, I've got to do the catering this way. Based on that, I've got to have friends go pick some uh, daisies out of the farmer's field because we don't have money for a florist. Based on that, I don't know what it is. But, I mean, I've had folks on this team in the last two years, three years, four years, many, many, many of them have had some incredible weddings for under ten grand. Yeah. Wow. But it involved friend, it involved friends pitching in, moms cooking stuff for the reception. I mean, it involved all kinds of different things you can do. You don't have to do that. You're not doing anything morally wrong or financially wrong if you just say the budget's twenty and we're going to hire it all out. That's okay. But my point is, is that you can have a really nice wedding for twenty k. And one thing that helps me in these moments of spend and feel guilty is if you 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 had this twenty five thousand dollar budget and you decide to roll it down to eighteen five. 
make sure you take that gap money and you apply it to one of these things on the back end. Like I'm gonna use this for a car. I'm gonna use this for one of those things. And so you'll feel like you're getting ahead and you're getting this great wedding. But yeah. I, I, I'm like you, Dave, we've, I've seen some pretty inventive and creative weddings over the last couple of years because of COVID and they're awesome and they're all still married and they're not $100,000 in the hole. No, no, you don't. Let me, no, you don't borrow for a wedding. <laughs> no, 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 no. But she's not doing that. She's nope. not doing that. She's, what a great young lady. Very incredible. Cool. This is The Ramsey Show. Chaos. That's what it can feel like when your business is growing so fast you've outgrown your financial and accounting software. The faster you grow, the more likely you are to lose control of the numbers. And here's the reality. If you don't know your numbers, you don't know your business. That's why we use NetSuite by Oracle, the number one cloud financial system. Over 28,000 companies use NetSuite by Oracle, including Ramsey Solutions, because NetSuite gives us a single view of everything we need to make daily decisions. Whether you're making a few million to hundreds of millions a year, NetSuite gives you the visibility and control of the things you need to grow, like your financials, inventory, HR, planning, budgeting, and more, all in one dashboard. Go to netsuite.com slash Ramsey right now to get their free white paper, Jumpstart Your CFO Career. Dr. John Deloney, Ramsey Personality, is my co-host today. Parents, if you have school-age kids, the last thing you want is for them to be normal. You want them to be weird, like we teach around here. And that's why you've already got them listening to stuff like the Ramsey Show in the backseat of your car. You're raising next-gen financial peace smart kids, right? Hey, we're on board with this. So we've got a tons of stuff to help you and even your kids' teachers in our back-to-school sale. My God, back-to-school is here. One of the biggest challenges teachers face is getting students to engage in a healthy classroom conversation. And that's why Dr. John Deloney, to my right, created classroom editions of his Questions for Humans conversation starters for elementary, middle, and high school kids. Help them build lifelong friendships through real, in-person conversations at home keep the fun and learning going with the popular kids books the adventure pack is a family favorite includes the Storytime collection financial peace junior the smart saver bank all for teaching kids how to handle money if there's a teacher in your life or your kid's life pick them up one of the questions for humans classroom editions as a gift for them shop the back to school sale at ramseysolutions.com john i did not know you did i probably knew it but i forgot it classroom editions yeah for elementary middle school and high school classrooms uh, for what teachers does the elementary conversation starter sound like exactly is a conversation that would happen around a lunch table here at work <laughs> the same <laughs> conversation with me you and george on a boat trying to ski it's very similar <laughs> i'll just leave it at that randy's in washington dc hey randy what's up I'm doing well, Dave. How are you? Better than I deserve. What's How can we help? Well, gentlemen, I want to say thank you for accepting my call. Um, my wife and I are pretty much, and I, I would say, a good problem to have. So I'm active duty military. Um, we just sold our home at the end of June. We ended up with 184000 um in equity, which we used to pay off the rest of our debt. Uh, left us with about 130 left over. So we maxed out the emergency fund. Um, I have increased my contribution to my TSP uh, to 15%, like I'm supposed to in baby, in baby step four. Um, the problem I have is I'm up for a promotion this year, which is about a $450 um, pay increase per month. And what I don't know right now is whether I should increase my, just basically 
do the percentage difference and contribute that to my TSP till I can retire from it or um, use it for a separate account. Okay, cool. Cool. Uh, I mean, you you can dump it into the TSP if you want. You could dump it into a Roth IRA if you want. Are you in the Roth TSP? You need to be. I am. So I'm. Uh, and the C it, plan, eighty percent, twenty I, twenty S. So I'm at sixty C, twenty S, and twenty I. That's good. That's the mix we teach. Yeah, that's good. Okay, so you're already on track with all that. Yeah, I mean, you're you're in a baby step seven situation until you repurchase a home. Are you stable in terms of your location? Are you going to buy again, or are you just waiting to quit for the military, quit moving you around for you buy again? Uh, so right now we're going to wait until I'm ready to retire to purchase our forever home. Um, that's actually like a second part to the question. So the extra when when will you we, be retiring? In about ten years. Okay. All right. Yeah, you need to be dumping the rest of that with a Smart Investor Pro then and some mutual funds, so it will keep up with the increase in value in real estate during that time. You don't want it sitting there making nothing and still, because 184,000 10 years from now won't buy what 184,000 will buy now. So that that that's the thing. So, hey, man, thanks for your service. But, yeah, load that TSP up, load your Roth IRAs up, and then load your house fund up. And that's really all you got left to do. You're just making money and doing good good, doing good work. Real quick, what's a, walk me through a TSP, Dave. What now? A TSP. Walk me through that. What does it what? A TSP. What are you asking about it? Walk me through. What is oh, that? I'll walk you through that. Oh, okay. Uh, it's the thrift savings plan. Okay. It's 401k for federal federal government employees, basically. Excellent. Okay. And, uh, but they have uh, certain options, and they have initials on them. The C is the common stock. The S is the small company. Uh, the I is the international. That's the three we recommend, heavy in the C, because the C is the highest performing of all their common stock with options. Yeah, common, yeah, it's like, fund, right? It's pretty much like an index fund. Yeah. It, it operates like an S and P 500 index fund, so the TSP does pretty well. Mm -hmm. And they just recently have started offering it as a Roth mm -hmm. option. And so, Fed federal employees of any kind, including military, have TSP. So postal Excellent. workers, that kind of stuff, you'll see it there all, all the time. Uh, guys, I want to. Um, I'm not going to pick on you about this uh, out there, and you can use the word. And I won't. I won't. I won't give you a hard time. But I, I'm going to say this uh, really. Um, because I appreciate the last caller a bunch, but there is no such thing as a forever home except heaven. I agree. Okay. This idea that you're going to buy a home uh, and I learned, I have the benefit that that's going to last forever. Well, it do, everything freaking changes. Mm -hmm. And so we, Sharon and I haven't moved a lot. We've moved every uh, 13 to 15 years, roughly uh, with rare exceptions. A couple of times we stayed two years in one place, but I mean, our, our homes that we've kept a long time, but they, they survived that stage of life. And then when we went to another stage of life. That was another stage of life. And then when we did, this is another stage of life. And so, um, I, I learned this, I was selling houses, uh, custom made homes, we custom for a custom home builder when I was 22 years old and people would come in to build their dream home. Hmm. And it was kind of the fur. It was what people used to say instead of saying forever home, right? It's I'm going to build my dream home, and it was so disturbing that during the 14 or 15 months that we built their dream home, that their dream changed. <laughs> That's right. While they were the dream changed while within that one year period of time, and so by the time they moved in, it was no longer their dream. Yeah. And it was dissatisfying. So there's just there's forever home is such a millennial thing to say. Mm -hmm. Just don't say that. Because it's not true. Okay? Well, it's this idea You're not that gonna be there forever. It's the idea you're that moving. I'm gonna get somewhere, and then everything will be. Ah, uh, that's just not how it's, life well, works. Well, there's like you can figure out one set of bricks and mortar, one bedroom arrangement, one great room kitchen arrangement, and and you know honestly, kitchens and uh, living spaces are so much better than they were 25 years ago. <laughs> right. The designs of homes across America are just way better. You know, it's so much more functional and livable and enjoyable, and we live our lives differently now than we did in those days. Uh, but the little house I grew up in was like a, a 1,100 square feet, and it was the uh, two in a den, which is the bedroom that wasn't sure what it was. That's right. Yep. It, it, it didn't know if it identified as a den or a bedroom. And so, um, <laughs> Depends on how many kids are there as to what yeah, it's used and for. So, yeah, and, and a bath and a half mm -hmm. and hollow corridors. You could hear everything through the whole house. It was gross. 
<laughs> and um, but when you slam them, they didn't. They never had the effect you wanted. If you slammed them hard enough, they just kind of came off in your hand, like <laughs> balsa wood right. or something. But yeah, but the uh, uh, but the kitchen in that house that I grew up in, my childhood was in. Yeah, it was perfect for that. But it was not a forever kitchen. Right. It was a. You know, when you in comparison to today, it was fine for then. But in compare, so no, you're not you're, you're not going to find a forever home. Here's what I, here, here's what I've come to believe with when it comes to forever home stuff, and even less than forever home for me. I keep thinking, all right, when I get this house paid off, I'm going to do this with the deck. I'm going to do this out there with the driveway. I'm going to build a retaining wall over here. And what I have found is these are all ways to distract me from living contently right now. I keep thinking down the road, things will be good down the road. I'll finally get this thing down the road. And if I can learn to be content where I'm at, that changes the, yeah. it changes the, the tenor of my life moving forward. But it's, it, and, and, but you're never going to get a nice enough, big enough, great enough home to live there forever. Cause something's going to change. Or you're going to lose your job or mom's going to get sick or whatever. And by the way, it, I, I built this monstrosity, huge home. <laughs> It was everything yeah. that we wanted, and we fully intended to live there the rest of our lives because we were old when we built it already, you know. And so, but we lived there 14 years, and we went, you know what? We're selling it, mm-hmm. and it was, it was, it's a fabulous, world class house, you know. But we sold it, mm-hmm. and we got a little house, a lot smaller now, and we like it a lot. <laughs> it's okay. I mean, gosh, it's just not that big a deal. Yeah. Uh, you know, you're not going to, there's, you cannot build something that will change as your life changes. Yes. Build forever relationships, not forever homes. Ooh, that sounds like a millennialist, uh, whatever those people's name is, line. <laughs> this is the Ramsey Show. Minimalists. On baby step number one, eh? How'd you guess? With health care costs rising, learn how Christian Healthcare Ministries can help you make the most out of your budget. Visit chministries.org slash budget. Don't worry, it's worth it. Dr. John Deloney, Ramsey personality, is my co-host today in the lobby of Ramsey Solutions on the debt-free stage. Joseph and Victoria are with us. Welcome to Nashville, guys. Thank you. Where do you guys live? Uh, We live in Minnesota. We are about 45 minutes south of Minneapolis, St. Paul area. Fun. Welcome to Nashville. And all the way to Nashville to do a debt-free scream. How much have you paid off? Uh, we are at uh, seventy-six thousand eight hundred nine dollars. I love it. And how long did this take you? Eleven months. Wow! And your range of income during that time? Uh, we started right around sixty a year, and we ended at one hundred and forty-five. Nice jump in one year. <laughs> did somebody go to work that wasn't working? I did. Ah, was, what do you do for a living, guys? Um, I actually drive school bus. Okay. Which is super fun. So. Yeah, that's cool. I'm a truck driver. Oh, a couple of drivers. Yeah. There. You got it. Did you drive from Minneapolis? No, no we, we flew. No, we flew. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. You drive for a living and you want to No, you we have five break. kids. So. Oh, yeah. I would love no, to hear no. your dinner conversations <laughs> like about the new V6 and the... <laughs> Yeah, they get interesting. <laughs> Tire to say the changes, least. and that'd be fantastic. Yeah. Right. <laughs> All right, guys. What kind of debt was the seventy-seven thousand? Uh, it was student loans for a little bit on my part. Then we had a camper, a car, and then a couple other random debts that we had to pay off. So mm-hmm. just multitude of things. What's the biggest thing you sold? Uh, Nothing. Yeah, you we didn't really didn't anything. have to sell anything. anything. Okay, so you just busted into it. Yep. And you had some money in savings you threw at it. A little bit. A little bit, yeah. How much? Uh, I would say three to five thousand. Not much. Okay. Nope. So basically, you go into work and you threw it all on there, huh? Yep. Yep. Uh-huh. That was the main reason I started working was to pay off the debt. And then down the road, now it's fun money. I was working use about it for 90 whatever. hours a week. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Yeah. I was doing 80 truck driving and then uh, I would do DoorDash on the side. Wow. You guys are kicking it. 
Okay, so you kicked it all the way from 60 to 145, and yep. that and enables you in 11 months to pay off 77. Yep. You got it. Wow. So what happened lit you on fire, man? Y'all went off like fireworks. Uh, honestly, uh, it, it's a pretty wild story. Uh, I was actually debating on whether I should commit suicide or not. Um, and I wanted my family to be secure when I was gone. And then uh, just listening to your show and hearing the Bible verses every day, uh, I came home and talked to Tori and decided we should probably get into a church. Uh, we found River Valley up in the Twin Cities and uh, gave our life to, to Jesus Christ, got baptized October 31st, which is kind of a joke and a half because our <laughs> favorite holiday was Halloween for a long time and uh, just changed our life ever since. Yep. Amazing. Wow. So was the financial pressure part of that or just other mental no, issues? Um, I'm, I'm a disabled veteran, mm -hmm. uh, so I deal with PTSD and some traumatic brain injury from, from some of that. So Wow. What's your uh, healing journey been like? Uh, you know, it's uh, it's been a process. I, I got into a big, good group of uh, guys at church, uh, some men's leadership courses, um, starting counseling with the VA coming up on August 1st. So Very good. Congrats, man. Very good. It's awesome. Man, I'm so proud of you guys. Yeah. I mean, the money is a, is a big deal, paying off 77000 in 11 months. Yeah. But you guys changed your whole lives. We yeah. did. And saved your life. Yeah. In to. the process. Yeah. And the money was just a little part of that journey. Right. Yeah. And but you, it, it started out listening to this, this podcast, <laughs> huh? or this radio show. That's, yeah. a, that's where it started, yeah. yeah. Oh so talk God. to us about when he came and sat down. And uh, as his wife, um, I, I've sat with a bunch of folks in your situation and right. your wife you knew for a long time there's a gap here oh absolutely but then when he sits down and says here's how big that gap really is right. that's that's a lot right? yeah and it was an eye-opener yeah wa like, walk us through your next steps um it was essentially just trying to batten down the hatches so okay. he said we have to pay off this amount of money we have to work with this amount of money yeah. so we went from having a grocery budget with five kids of you know 150 200 a week down to 75 to 100 a week so it was difficult but we managed to do it you know cutting down our cell phones cutting cable cutting everything we possibly could mm -hmm. to fit everything in this budget while paying off as much as we could mm -hmm. so it was a huge jump but it was definitely doable mm -hmm. that's amazing i want to make sure i get the order of the occurrences so you started listening to the show correct yep um then you started attending church correct yep and then you started working on the debt yep we had to get uh, our ducks in a row yeah well yeah. In a way, we, we, I started listening to the show, we started working on the debt, and then after a while of that, we plugged into church. Oh, okay. Yep. Okay. So it was kind of all mixed in together. Mm -hmm. Right. I couldn't, I couldn't, get, I couldn't fi figure the timeline. Okay. Wow. Wow. It's powerful. Sounds like a good church. It's a very good church. It's amazing. River Valley is definitely a blessing to the Twin Cities. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And you are a blessing to the Twin Cities, my man. <laughs> <laughs> he absolutely is. There's yeah. a lot... A lot, a lot of men right now who th are sitting down, driving a truck, mowing their yard with their headphones in, listening to this conversation, and they have begun to tell themselves, the people around me would be better if I wasn't here. Yeah. Absolutely. Too many men tell themselves that. Mm -hmm. And you had the courage to say something out loud, and now you're able to inspire millions of people because of your courage and bravery, and the journey's still going, and you're still meeting with men, and you're still going to counseling. Like... Mandy, I, I was in honor of your service as a veteran. I am equally, if not more, in honor of your service as a civilian saying, here's who I'm going to be and this is what this looks like, man. That's bravery and courage, and I'm proud of you. Thank you. I'm Pretty glad to know there's men like you in our community. Amen. It's awesome. Amen. And women who will <laughs> batten down Go the hatches, right? Go drive a school right? bus to get us out of debt. <laughs> That's right, man. There's a couple of rock stars up there. Yeah. Wow. You guys are amazing. Beautiful. You're amazing. You. you have really become heroes and changed your lives. Mm-hmm. I'm so proud of you. Very, very, very well done. What do you tell people the key to getting out of debt is? You just got to start. Go drive a school bus. Yeah, go drive a school bus. <laughs> it's actually really fun. I know. I'm not putting it down. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people do. They think, how do you do that? I'm like, you just do it. Yeah. yeah it's you, fun. Well, you like people and kids. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I love kids. Yeah. I had a school bus driver that hated people and kids. Yeah. So. <laughs> There's a few of them. Yeah. I'm not going to lie. That was, that, was the, that was the 1960s and 70s where they had a cigarette hanging out of their mouth oh while they're driving, right? It's like, <laughs> you people, shut up back there. Yeah, you know, that kind of thing, right? So. Hey, but a good bus driver will spot those two kids that get on the <sighs> bus that have nobody, and you will be their light for their whole yep. 
like that's a I gift have a too. few of them like that. Yes, you yeah. do. That's yep. awesome. Good for you yeah, guys. Uh, stopping the uh, who was it the other day? Tell me about the bullying on the school bus. Yeah, wow. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. a big deal. Way to go, you guys. So, what do you tell people the key to getting out of debt is? You just got to start. Start. Yeah. You got to start. You got to yep. start. Yep. Yeah. start it starts in your head, and then through the process, it yeah. it, uh, it moves to your heart. It, it goes to a, uh, an everything I got mentality to a whatever it takes mentality. Yeah. So with the journey you've, the heart journey you've been on, mm-hmm. um, suicide, Jesus, getting out of debt, a lot of transformation in your heart in a short period of time. Um, talk about how that feels. Because, I mean, you, you, you did a complete double backflip here, man. <laughs> um, you know, it's, uh, it's calming. <laughs> you know, it's, uh, there, there's nothing to worry about. It's everything, everything's already taken care of. You just got to go out and make it happen. Right. There's a word we use around here called peace. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, the Absolutely. day we paid off our last debt, yeah. I was like, oh, my God. Financial <laughs> peace <laughs> university, yeah. Wow. Wow. Yeah, it really is. Very cool. Well, we've got a copy of Baby Steps Millionaires for you. That's the next chapter in your story. I want to hear back from you and hear how your journey's going. Thank Absolutely. you. Y'all yeah. write, write in and tell us an email. We'll read it and keep everybody up to date. You awesome. guys are very very impressive you have come a very long way in a lot of areas in a very short period of time right your income your your debt your spiritual walk your mental health everything is pretty impressive yeah so um got a copy of baby steps millionaires for you total money makeover for you give that to somebody get them started uh financial peace university a one-year uh, membership to that get you going in that and that's got the new videos in it that include dr deloney and george campbell and rachel cruz and me and uh, all right let's bring the kiddos up you said there's five of them what are their yes. names and ages uh, so we have mason who's 16 uh-huh. madison and michaela who are 13 uh-huh. maya is six uh-huh. and maverick is three all right wow lots of m's they're all m&ms there are a handful of m&ms <laughs> <laughs> can't have just one Picker. i love it very cool well done have have they been practicing a debt-free scream? Yes. Absolutely. So the whole gang knows how to do this because they know their family tree was changed. Yes. All right. Well, we're so proud of you, and thank you for your service, and we're proud of you guys being heroes. Count it down. Let's hear a debt-free scream. Ready? Three, two, one. We're debt-free! Yeah. Man, oh man, oh man. Dave, I've suddenly got allergies in my eyes. This is The Ramsey Show. John Deloney Ramsey personality is my co-host today. Chad is in Augusta, Georgia. Hi, Chad. How are you? Good, sir. How y'all doing? Better than we deserve, man. What's up? Oh, yeah. I was just calling in. I'm a, I am have, I have a, a mortgage. Just about ready to pay it all. Good. But I'm a real estate agent. And, you know, with a real estate agent, you got to kind of go get it. And I love going to get it. But it's a big chunk. And I'm just like... I think I'm there, but I'm looking for, I guess, maybe a final confirmation with retirement that I have, what's in place to pay it off. I've been a fan of yours for probably 20 years, and I've hit bumps along the way to, to get my house paid off, and now I'm at a position. So Thank what you do you owe on it? Oh, 95. How much cash do you have? 211. Good Lord. Pay it off today. Pay it off. What are you doing? <laughs> pay it off today. You don't need to think about then this. You knew what I was going to say. Yard. Jacob's in Fort Worth. Hey, Jacob, welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hot dog. Is this really happening? It's happening. What's up? <laughs> hey, so uh, my uh, in-laws bought a house in 2018 for $280,000, and they're offering to sell it to us now for what they paid for it then. Um, 
And since it's a non-arms league purchase, uh, we were wondering who we need to hire to help us uh, make that happen. Okay, so th- they're selling you the house at a below market price. Yes. And are you getting a mortgage? Uh, yeah, we were also wondering uh, what would be the best way to pay for it. And do you, a do, you have a, do you have a down payment in cash? Uh, not yet. We're moving in. Their tenants just moved out. We're planning to rent for six months to a year mm-hmm. uh, to build up uh, down payment. Okay. Um, Work with a mortgage company to establish what you've got to do to do that so that you do that properly. Um, okay. And then the mortgage company will require a formal closing with an appraisal, a okay. survey, title insurance, all the things that you've got to do anyway. The title company that the mortgage company who can hook you up with to do the closing can also then simply prepare the deed. Okay. The vast majority of the paperwork done at that closing will be around the mortgage. All right. But you just need a deed in addition to that. A warranty deed in most states is what it will be. And okay. um it, but this is arm's length. There's no weird family crap like you can't figure out. You're not allowed to buy Christmas presents for five years because you bought this from them or something. <laughs> they don't have any strings attached, right? Yeah, no strings attached. Real healthy people mentally. Yes. Okay. All right. So um yep, just trying to help us out. Yeah, and they're not gonna like say you shouldn't have got you shouldn't have bought that car. Uh no. We don't like what you did with the flooring. I don't think so. No. Okay, good. No. All right. All right. Just checking because you you know this is a dangerous thing. So <laughs> we'll make sometimes sure. that discounted price comes out of your backside instead of your wallet. Yeah. Well it comes out of your Got it. yeah, it comes out of out of your soul. The, the exactly and affects your relationship with their daughter, your wife, and so on. So, yeah, just want to make sure all that, if that's all good, but the transaction is fairly simple. Uh, while you're getting, uh, I will tell you to get a, uh, a title policy. The mortgage company will require to get you to get a mortgage title policy that usually in most states you can get what's called a simultaneous issue, and you get an owner's title policy as well while you're at it. Um, the title company in order to execute on the mortgage probably will require a sales contract be developed, but they probably have a form. You can just fill out and do that. Okay. So it's really most of the, uh, detail crap will be handled by the mortgage company and their tight and the title company that they recommend to get everything done. You'll add to that probably a sales contract and owner's title policy and a which would probably be 50 bucks or 100 bucks or something and then uh you'll add to that the deed and in most states that's called a warranty deed i don't know what it is in texas but i imagine it is so uh the that's the actual title to the property and then the more the uh title company will charge a closing fee and the recording fee to record uh, the mortgage or the deed of trust, depending on the state. And then they will also can record that warranty deed to you. The warranty deed is of no value until you record it at the courthouse. And that's every state. Mm-hmm. And so if you don't, if you're, if you're walking around with a deed to your house in your pocket, you don't own the house yet unless or until it has been recorded at your local courthouse. Uh, the courthouse the recording of the deed at the courthouse is how ownership is established and transferred. So that's where you want to make sure that goes through. But that's a fairly basic thing that any title company doing the mortgage will help you do and probably automatically tell you everything that they're doing and all that. It's most title companies in America do a really, really good job or closing attorneys or whoever's doing the real estate closing, which if it's a closing attorney, they probably sell title insurance. Mm. So it's all it's all tied in together there. Very, very cool. Good good situation. Yeah, it's a great situation. Kyle is with us. Kyle is in Chicago. Hey Kyle, what's up? Hey Dave. I'm good. How are you? Better than I deserve. How can I help? Good. Hey, uh, I got a job offer to uh increase this uh lateral move from two companies, but company A I've got a I got a loan in my 401k, and I think that's going to hinder my move. Um, I want to move because it's a substantial increase in pay, um, but I don't know what to do or how to make this happen. How much is the 401k loan? Uh, It's $15,000. Okay. And what's the increase in pay? Uh, About $100,000. Lord. 
That's yes. nice. What yes. do you make now? Uh, one, 101. And you're going to make 201? About 200, yeah. So, yeah Doing right what? What do you do for a living? Uh, I'm an engineer. Nice jump. Well done, man. Were you being o- you. underpaid before, or are they overpaying you? <laughs> maybe a little bit of both. I, maybe a little bit of both, I guess. You know. Uh, right, is there any signing bonus at all? Um, I could ask for one, and that's what I thought about doing, but I don't want to be hooked on that. You know, at the same Just time. Just tell them um, you got a fifteen thousand dollars four hundred one k loan. You need to clear. Can they give you that much of an advance and take it out of the okay. next three, take it out of the next three checks? Okay, that could work. Yeah, and that that just takes care of it because you got if you don't repay this loan in full within sixty days of leaving, it's considered an early withdrawal, and you're going to get hammered with taxes and penalties that are going to make you wish you had done something. Okay. Yeah, so you do so need to take have- care of it. I, I, you know, you've already have one kind of debt. If you move it to a different kind of debt over to a credit union loan, that's okay. But my preference would be that the new employer somehow help you make this move. If I were bringing you on and I could advance you 15K um, against your next three months pay or whatever or four months pay and take it out of that where you could still eat during those months but still get my money back pretty quick as the employer, I would do that. Okay, cool. Yeah, the, like they said, the change – the increase in pay is definitely going to help me pay other, you know, other debt off. But I just was worried about this. Yeah, but probably not until bad, you so. get this, unless they take, if they take this out of your future check because they advance it, it may take you, maybe your get out of debt plan starts after that's done because right. you may need that, <laughs> you may need to eat out But against 200 grand, 5,000 over three months is, that's not a big chunk. Yeah, it should, it should be okay. Yeah. It should be okay. It should be very, very doable. But yeah, sometimes you just, um, just say, uh, Look, we got a deal, but I have a problem. Can you help me solve this problem? So as an employer, would, would you think less of me if I came to you with that no. challenge? No. Okay. No. Uh, as long as you don't come in demanding and belligerent right. about it. Like, yeah. I got to have that. You know, but instead, you know, help me solve a problem. Yep. Oh, I would love to help you solve a problem. You're a new team member. That's yeah, why yeah. I'm bringing you on to, you know, I, you know, I'd love to do that. I, yeah. You know, I, I don't have the money to move, so we pay relocation expenses. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, it's whatever. There's problems to be solved when you're hiring people sometimes. Mm-hmm especially in this market where yep. we've got almost no unemployment. Yeah. Um, and so, uh, you know, that they, they probably are real happy he's coming. Well, uh, uh, clearly for doubling him up. Yeah, yeah. clearly they're adding 100 <laughs> to what he was making. So they're pretty, but, they're but pretty happy about it. But it was important to say, if they say no, go down to the local credit union, clear this thing, and yeah, get that just, thing just go out. Get you, and then just put that in your debt snowball and it's knock possible. it out. That's right. Yeah, that, that's simple. The good news is you got an extra 100 k to knock out your debt snowball now. Real quick. Ding, ding, baby. This is The Ramsey Show. It's John Deloney, co-host of The Ramsey Show. Did you know over 18 million people listen to The Ramsey Show every week? A lot of those people listen on one of our 600-plus radio stations across the country. To find a station near you, go to RamseySolutions.com slash show. of Ramsey Solutions, it's the Ramsey Show, where debt is dumb, cash is king, and the paid-off home mortgage has taken the place of the BMW as the status symbol of choice. We help people build wealth, do work that they really love, and create actual amazing relationships. Number one best-selling author and host of the Dr. John Deloney Show, Ramsey personality John Deloney is my co-host today. Open phones at 888 825 225. One of the benefits of this show being where it has been for 30 years in the city of Nashville is occasionally we have uh, actual big time stars drop in who also happen to be friends. Uh, John Rich of Big and Rich, uh, Save a Horse, Ride a Cowboy f- uh, fame is uh, he and Joan are good friends of Sharon and mine. Drop by and uh, he's got a rather interesting story you've engaged in, my cousin. <laughs> Hello, well Dave. Well done, brother. Well, thank you, sir. Well done. You are a uh, you are 
are a juggernaut without a doubt and have always pulled off some fun stuff. You and I have talked many times on the air and many more times off the air about this stuff, um, including the whole Redneck Riviera movement and the whole, the whole process. Uh, but many years ago, you've written and produced the songs and um, multiple, multiple number ones over the years. Many years ago, you moved away from the, um, well, the... Industry, the industry, the radio yeah. industry, the labels, the publishers, and all that, and and the world that we're in today allows you to just get direct access to the consumer, right. and um, consequently, you wrote a song. <laughs> so Mike Rowe and you, this is the last time we talked. I was talking right. to Mike yeah. the other day about this. Yeah, um, wrote a song. Santa's got a dirty job. That yeah. one went to number one for yeah. about about a hot minute. Yeah, uh, back at Christmas, and uh, now you got another number one. Without a label. How do right. you do this? Right. Well, the the people are responding, uh, which is a great thing to see. I, I was uh, just so struck by the intense irony that all the things happening in our country right now that are so negative are being perpetrated on us under the banner of the word progress. This is a progressive idea. This is progress. Uh, trust us. It's going to be fine. Let's send gasoline through the roof. You need to be driving an electric car anyway. Trust me, it's good for you. Progress, progress. And I thought, man, that is, that's the opposite of what I would call progress, the things I see going on in our country. So I sat down and I wrote this little three-minute straight-ahead country song called Progress. And I wrote it actually in the beginning of the year, and I waited to see what the summer was going to look like. And I saw this poll that came out in early July that said 88% of Americans agree. And I went, wow, that's a big statement under its own. They agree that the country's on the wrong track. I said, 88% of Americans, I said, that's conservatives and liberals and moderates, that's everybody. I said, it's time to put the song out. So instead of going with the regular big platforms, Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube, um, I went with True Social and Rumble, which are so much smaller than the ones I just listed. Obviously, they're fledgling level at this point. I said, let's just see if I can beat the machine without using the machine. Let's see if it's possible to do it. We put it out within six hours of it coming out. The thing was the number one most downloaded song, not just in country, but in all of music. And it has stayed there to this very second. It's still sitting at number one. And there's there's people like Lizzo and Billie Eilish and Harry Styles and the, the biggest artists in the world are, are down below me. I don't have a record deal. It's not number one because I'm singing it. I can promise you that. It's number one because of what it says. And, and it's, it's connecting with people on a very deep level. And people are sharing it like crazy. And you've got a lot of media on it a lot of people it became a news story because, yeah because you've done it without a label but also the the statement in the lyrics uh progress is not progress i mean right the hook line is stick your progress where the sun don't shine yeah <laughs> which is a that's about the nicest way you could say that dave you know i didn't cuss at anybody i didn't i didn't do anything terrible it's not like a kid rock song or something it's <laughs> I said it in a, in a nice country boy kind of way, but we've had enough. And the song says, uh, stick your progress where the sun don't shine. Keep your big mess away from me and mine. If you'd leave us alone, well, we'd all be just fine. So stick your progress where the sun don't shine. And I think what's happened is the moves that have happened recently uh, have stepped so far outside of political differences. It's more like just personal. You, you have to do this or you can't go to work. You have to do this. Uh, your ki we're, we're the parents when your kids are at school, not you. We're going to tell your kids what we want them to know. They stepped into our lives to such a degree under the banner of progress. I, me, for one, I'm just not going to accept that anymore. And I push back with this song and it seems to be becoming quite an anthem for people that feel the same way. Yeah. Yeah. It's especially devastating for Dave. Uh, he's a huge Billie Eilish fan. You don't know this. <laughs> no doubt. And so he can't wear a shirt around right now because the song's just... I've messed up Dave's good time. Yes. Massive Harry Styles fan. Totally just, yeah. Watermelon sugar high. That's Dave. <laughs> All day. Yeah, all day. I have no idea who these people are, you two. <laughs> I've got a middle schooler. I do, Otherwise, I wouldn't either. Yeah. I, do, I do know who John Rich is, though. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's it's battling, man. It's 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 still at number one. But these artists, these artists that are underneath me, they're a hundred times bigger than me. So this is really just people like who are listening right now. If you want to you want to see that sucker stay at number one, it's a buck twenty nine. It's not a big thing. Go download it on iTunes. And if you want to see, can you beat the machine without bending the knee? That's what I wanted to find out. Mm -hmm. And thanks for all the support. We've been able to do it. Yeah. Well, there's. There's a, a whole bunch of us figuring that out right now because um, this idea that you will comply right. 
to the mobs totalitarian rule Mm -hmm. Um, you will comply uh, with your virtue signaling Mm -hmm. and if you do not we will squash you like a bug right uh, is a very real thing out there yes it is and it's something that everyone that's in the public eye is navigating Uh, companies are navigating it people that are in the public eye are navigating it we're Ramsey we have to be wise and principled uh, and and decide which fight we want to pick where is it we want to stir up a ruckus you know, and we want to be intentional about it. And right. so, but it's it's a lot different than even three years ago mm-hmm. or even five years ago. The environment, the toxic environment and the culture is out of control. Hey, John, let me ask you this. Um, we have one of the most common questions I get from young authors, people who want to be songwriters. How do you do this and how do you write something? Everyone thinks you got to have a deal. You got to go with the big machine. You got to go get a group of this. And, that. and you had something that was on your heart that said, no, I want to put, I want to, put this out there. Now, and obviously you're a good singer or songwriter. You know how that, the, the recording process works, but what would you tell that young person with an idea who mm-hmm. thinks they have to go this quote unquote traditional route to make it, to be heard, to, to, to do what I want to, to say what I want to say. Right. Well, I think to Dave's point earlier, we have routes now to get directly to the people. It really comes down to your content at that point. Yeah. If, if you come with something, you could be somebody we've never heard of before, but if you come with something that is that is inspiring enough that hits hard enough uh and it starts getting passed around it can turn into an absolute avalanche of let's, action let's let's fire the song we want to hear it as we go into the break yeah. there's a hole in this country where it's hard used to be no glory is divided on fire in the street They say building back better Make America great If that's a wave of the future All I've got to say Stick your progress Where the sun don't shine Keep your big mess Away from me and mine Thanks for coming by, brother us alone, Thank you. Thank you, Well, we'd all be just fine Last couple of years, real estate market's been tough. We've all felt it. If you're scared, well, you don't have to be. The market seems crazy. It has slowed down, but it's not going to crash. If you're ready to buy, it's a good time to buy. If you're ready to sell, it's a good time to sell. It's just not as wild and crazy and white hot as it was a few months back. So what you've got to have somebody with knowledge and skill to help you navigate this. This is not amateur hour. You need a high-octane, high-protein real estate agent. If you're going to list a house right now, this is an excellent time to list a house. But you need to get in touch with one of our endorsed local providers that are Ramsey Trusted. These are agents that are high producers. They know what's going on. They've got their finger on the pulse. They're doing lots and lots of transactions every month. It's not your Uncle Charlie who just got his dadgum license. Don't list your house with your Uncle Charlie who just got his license. That's dumb. Because you're going to put your largest asset that you own with a newbie, with a beginner. Don't do that. Get somebody that knows what they're doing. RamseySolutions.com slash agent. Get with one of our ELPs that are Ramsey trusted. RamseySolutions.com slash agent. Lisa is in Grand Island, Nebraska. Hi, Lisa. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hi. Thank you. It's an honor to speak with you both. You too. Um, What's up? I have a... Thank you. I have a, um, maybe a couple of questions. My husband and I, I'm 60 and he's 63, and we have about 30000 left on our mortgage. And I am wondering if we could uh, take 15000 out of our Roth and 15000 out of our 401k to just kind of rip the Band-Aid off. How much is in your Roth yeah, total? Um, now it's about 520 why don't and you just take it all out of the Roth? Well, our, oh, I'm 
Our 401k is five, and our Roth is at twenty-two. Twenty-two thousand. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And the the balance on the mortgage was thirty. Yes. Well, you've got any money in savings that's not in retirement? Um, just our monthly savings. How much is in that? Uh, Fifteen. Okay. All right. I'd probably clean out that Roth just for simplicity. Okay. That's 22 of it. And then pull the rest out of your 401k, and you're going to pay taxes on that, but no penalties. Okay. And I'd be debt-free um, like by the end of the week. Oh, good. All right. Because my our advisor is kind of thinking that we're not going to have really enough to get us through. If thirty thousand dollars keeps you from getting through when you have five hundred and twenty five thousand in your account, your advisor's an idiot. <laughs> okay, I feel much better. I mean, think Thank about you. it. You're not if you're thirty thousand dollars off, you got other problems. I think yeah. a great gift yeah. you could provide your um, advisor would be to swing by a CVS and pick up a calculator. And <laughs> when you go visit, you could just hand that with a bow on it. It's an old-fashioned thing that people used to use, yeah. Our question of the day comes from Blinds.com. Find out for yourself why Blinds.com is the number one online retailer of custom window coverings. Free samples, free shipping, new promos. They run every month. You'll save even more. Use the promo code RAMSEY to get the best deal. All right, today's question comes from Jason in Texas. Jason writes, I've been a huge fan for 20 years, but have not been able to implement any of your strategies because... Just take a pause right there. My wife thinks tithing and the rest of your methods are too restrictive. She stopped going to church a long time ago and refuses to forgive me for things that happened in our past. The ministers that I've consulted with say she has emotionally and spiritually abandoned me years ago. Oh, man. My 18-year-old watches your videos and loves them. She keeps asking, why didn't you and mom do all this stuff? It seems to work really well. I'm trying to explain why, but don't want to throw her mom under the bus. Is there a way a 52-year-old can start over in life and help a daughter become all she can be? Oh, yes. They do it all the time. Yeah, all the time. Um, I don't want to minimize, Jason, I don't want to minimize your pain. Here's what your daughter really needs. Um, To quote our friend Jocko, she needs you to take ownership. Uh, You look back over your life, and it's because your wife did this. Your wife didn't do that. It's because of this. What she needs you to say is, I didn't. I made some choices along the way. And here's where I find myself. And here's what I'm going to do with these next steps. And here's what you can do, too. And there's something about that ownership that's really powerful. (laughs) So it sounds like there's a... A, a chasm mm-hmm. in this relationship is this due for an ultimatum like you go see a marriage counselor um, well, and you say uh i'm going to go see a counselor and if we can't begin to get on the same page and resolve some of these things then we're going to call this um it it th- the way it writes is is there a way to start over i was just assuming that they've, ca- they've called it yeah they've yeah. called it so now, if- it, sounds, it sounds like he has the ministers have given him permission mm-hmm. Is in his mind. Right. But I don't think he's looked at her and said, This is done. It's time for me to move it, on. It's um, unless we can heal, right. this is done. That's right. Um, just zero chance of a healing or? Yeah. I mean, if somebody, if, if your spouse left you emotionally and spiritually and physically years and years ago, then yeah, these kids have grown up in a home and that's their picture of what love looks like. That's their picture of what marriage and partnership and communication and connection looks like. And so healing starts with, Um, I didn't, I should have had a hard conversation a long, long time ago. And I Mm -hmm. didn't, and this is the law that I, so basically they've been divorced. They just need to actually formalize it. They've, they've been divorced for a long time and they just need to formalize. They've model, uh, modeled what that looks like to their kids. And so it starts with ownership. Here's some choices I didn't make right a long, long time ago. Um, and here's the more importantly, or as importantly is here's what I'm going to start doing now. And I'd love you to join me. And I think I think it's that complicated and that hard and that simple. Yeah, when we went through bankruptcy and lost everything, it um, terrorized me and traumatized Sharon. Mm-hmm. Um, and so 
that's a thing I did that she had to forgive me for, in a sense, because I basically, you know, she, I always laugh and say she thought she married Sir Galahad. Turns out it was Goober. But, um, <laughs> but that's, you know, the, the, the truth is she was left um, with a situation, but I was not going on, nor, but I, there's a period of time that we can uh, recognize the terror that she felt, the trauma from having little kids and no money and the water got turned off because her husband's a buffoon, right? Uh, okay, granted. But five years later, we're not still talking about that. No, then she's choosing to carry that stuff around and, and weaponize it. And I'm not, gonna, I'm not gonna be Correct. at the other end of that weapon it, ad infinitum. Right. I Once mean, somebody has, says it, I'm staying. So dude, 20 staying. years yes, ago, sir. you did something. Mm -hmm. You know, after four years of that, everything after four years is your fault. <laughs> if you choose to carry that thing around, no, right. you, no, he put, he, he accepted the paralyzation of the household oh, for sixteen yes. years longer than That's he should right. have. That's right. That's right. He should have dealt with her. That's right. A long, long time ago. Lack of healing. That's right. And it was a, not that she didn't have a valid reason for being pissed. I don't know what he did. Right. But I, I know what I did. I lost everything. It was my fault. Sharon had no idea what was going on. It wasn't her fault. I didn't hide it from her. I just didn't ask her. Right. And she didn't know. And so she's left feeling, uh, you know, uh, like you're driving down the road in the middle of the night and you hit a patch of ice and the car starts spinning. Yeah, that's a great And you analogy. know you're going to hit something. You just don't know what. Or when. And, you know, and that's where she was for a, a year and a half period of time as we went down the, 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 the toilet financially. And the round and around we go, you know. And so, yeah, granted. And today even, um, you know, we've got checks and balances in our relationship in place so that um she's not left feeling like i'm somehow out of control again that's right. he, because that, that little seed that was 30 years that's ago right. that's right and uh how old was rachel when all this happened born, born. baby she's a baby so when i think about my friend rachel we've talked about this when she has a uh emergency fund for her emergency fund yeah. those seeds were planted in Money could be scarce, or money's a thing, yep. right? And that's those are long ago, right? So she sit with your that daughter. Tension from her mom. Sit with your daughter and have that conversation right here, Jason. Exactly. Take exactly. ownership, brother. Yeah, time, past time to take ownership. Yeah. This is the Ramsey Show. John Deloney, Ramsey personality, number one best-selling author, is my co-host today. In the lobby of Ramsey Solutions, on the debt-free stage, Lorraine is with us. How are you, Lorraine? I'm nervous, but I'm good. I'm. I got this. I got this. You got it. You got it. We've never lost a patient. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> so you're you're going to be okay. So we're so glad you're here. Thanks for coming. Where do you live? Thank you. I'm from LA, California. Oh, fun. Welcome to Nashville. <laughs> Thank so you. So how much debt did Lorraine pay off? I paid off $70,000. Very good. How long did that take? It took me three years. Good for you. And your range of income during that time? I went from 219 um, to 234. Whoa. What do you do for a living? I am a heavy lift uh, operator. I work for the ports of LA and Long Beach. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. Um, closer to the city of San Pedro mm -hmm. for a company uh, called APL. Yeah, yeah. So you're sitting in one of those cabs lifting those cartons on and off the ships. All day. Y'all had a boring few years, huh? It's been hectic. <laughs> it's been crazy. Yeah, the last few months trying to play catch up. Yeah. It's wow. It's been a lot of work. Have you, you ever dropped one? Yes. Yes. Okay, I just, <laughs> I just needed to know. What was in it? Actually, I, um, not the can, but the whole machine tipped over because it was too heavy yeah I've had with my, you in it oh yeah i had a rescue team come and get me out you were in the did it go in the drink it went in the water no 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 it was on the it was on the yard but oh, it was God. uh not facing how the many water. stories did it fall over this is it I, was, I, I, I can get back to the debt in a minute but oh my gosh <laughs> <laughs> it was about oh my goodness um five high She's the reason we can't get glass. It was, that was the one full of glass. No, it was full of sand. It was gravel. Oh, that's why it was It was so heavy. really heavy, and I stack them up 
they're uh, 40 feet high each mm-hmm. can. So I, I did, oh my God, it was, it's pretty high. Yeah. It's pretty high. Yeah. So it wasn't a straight drop. It kind of like, was, <clears throat> yeah, like a tree. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Wow. And then you, next day you're back in there going again, huh? Going doing that again. Go do it. Two hundred thousand dollars a year for do that. This is awesome. Yeah. So what kind of debt was your seventy thousand? So I had credit fever. I had a big relationship with my credit cards, um, mostly credit cards. Kind of I a toxic relationship. Toxic. An abusive relationship. Yes. Um, I had uh, two personal loans. I had a car loan, and I paid my son's um, tuition on a monthly basis. You were just kind of normal. I was very Making normal. Making two hundred thousand and broke. Very broke. So what happened? What woke you up? Um, I just, um, I had just bought my car and I was, you know, excited going through the, the channels. I stopped listening to music and I said, I'm just listening to, you know, radio uh, podcasts and stuff like that. And I accidentally heard you on one of the stations Uh-oh. say, are you sick and tired of being sick and tired? And I was like, what? What is he talking about? And I switched it (laughs) another time I heard it again and you said are you living paycheck to paycheck and I was like what and then I switched it again who's this guy following me around what does he want (laughs) what is he talking to me how does he know me around and then the last time I heard you you said um you know most Americans don't even have a thousand dollars saved in their savings and I was like okay he knows too much (laughs) (laughs) This is too much. He knows way too much about my life. Like, this is me. And so I tuned and in. your shoe this size car, is nine. This, and new, this new car has a spy thing in it. <laughs> yeah. So it's a Tesla feature. I tuned in and I said, oh, my God, all these years, I've been doing everything wrong. Mm. Everything wrong. I, mm. I was told, the more money you make, the more money you spend. The more money mm. you make, the more money you spend. And that was my... That was her mother's voice. Did you hear that? I heard it. Yep, I heard it. <laughs> Actually, that was my dad's voice. Oh, okay. <laughs> my mom was... That has a high voice. Okay. Yeah, my mom was a frugal one. She was like, uh, debt is the devil. You know, don't get no credit cards. That's horrible. Don't do that. Don't live mm, like that. Okay. So she was, you know, a lot more... Okay, so you start listening to the radio, and that, that kind of, you start going, I, I've been doing this all wrong. Then what did you do? You just kept listening more, or you got the book, or what'd you do? I got the book. Total, total read, Money Makeover? Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. I, I said, I got to go get this book. I need to read it. I, this guy knows what he's talking about. He knows everything about everything that I've done <laughs> you wrong. you tell my wife? <laughs> 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 yeah, you became my financial father, and, you know, and I just said, wow, like, I never, you know, my dad never really talked to me about finances. We were raised, Mm -hmm. do as you're told and don't ask questions. Yeah. So I'm hearing you talk about your kids and how you, you know, raise Rachel and how Rachel's like me. I'm Rachel. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm like, oh, my God. He would be so mad at me. Plus or minus being in a tower lifting crates. (laughs) (laughs) I was like, Father Dave would be so mad at me right now. I was like, I need to make him proud. So So now you did it. I did it. What do you tell people the key to paying off seventy thousand dollars is? I say get on a budget. Mm-hmm. Um, getting on a budget was new to me. Mm-hmm. Um, I knew how much I had to pay, but I never knew how mm-hmm. to get it done. And the book just guided me, and it, it took me there. And about a year before I almost uh, finished, I wanted to be debt free by the time I was fifty. Mm-hmm. But, you know, life happens and a lot of things happen in my in my family that uh-huh. held me back. So I um, ended up um, going into your website and I got a financial coach uh-huh. and she was excellent. Cynthia Stringer, she's uh-huh. watching. I told her to watch me. Right. Where do you go, Cynthia? The most beautiful voice, very calming, very soothing. She became my financial therapist at yeah. the end. Wow. And I told her about how I felt. Um, I, to be honest with you, I didn't cut my credit cards until I was done Hmm. because I was so attached to them. You had a, you do have a wicked relationship. Yes. (laughs) Will you ever go back? Never. You sure? Um, Because they they were abusive and you enjoyed it. I have, um, five children at home. I have, um, um, Anthony Rubin, Alvin and Ali and Alan and Alina, and they look at me Hmm. and we're we're all on the same page now. They are all way better than I am, and they are already at their emergency fund. They're already at ten thousand, so they're doing great. And you know, they're only 
working, you know, little jobs here and yeah. there, and they're doing amazing. And so I owe that to you because you changed my family tree. Oh, you did. Yeah. Well, you're, you're a hero, girl. With your steps and your you're help. You're a hero. And, um, I mean, you, you know, yeah. you're used to lifting heavy things, but you lifted a whole life change. Thank you. Pretty important. Thank you. Yeah, and don't minimize. I I watched my mom do hard things from 40 to 50, and it's changed generationally. My kids are different because of the work my mom did when she was in her 40s. And your kids watched that happen, and your grandkids are going to pick up these messages about freedom and living without this debt. So good for you. It's been. It took 10 years, and you changed an entire legacy. I did. I did, and um, I'm just so proud. I. I have more than a thousand dollars saved now. <laughs> I've never had that before. And after my journey um, in in January, I had um, I've always had kidney stone issues, and I had this huge kidney stone. It was like an inch and a quarter, Oof. and I had already saved um, some money in my emergency fund, mm-hmm. and I was off for a month, mm. and I was whistling the whole time. I was just you know, recovering at peace. Yeah. And it was beautiful. An emergency becomes an inconvenience. Yes. When you got your crap together. Well done, kiddo. Right. It's incredible. It well was, done. It was great. You're amazing. Thank you. Yeah, we've got a copy of Baby Steps Millionaires for you. That's the next chapter in your story for sure. And another copy of Total Money Makeover. You can give that away when you're talking about this sometime and somebody says, how'd you do that? Total Money Makeover did it. It's done it for about 8 million people, by the way. Yeah. And Financial Peace University, if you've not been through it yet, we're going to give you a membership for a year. If you have been through it, give it to somebody. The brand new videos and the course, you plug into the community there. You get people around you like you did with a coach and all that. It changes everything in the whole process. It's pretty, pretty stinking incredible. So, so proud of you, kiddo. Well you. done, well done. $70,000 paid off. Lorraine from Los Angeles. Three years she did it, making two nights. 19 to 234. More importantly, she changed her whole life. Count it down. Let's hear a debt free scream. Three, two, one. I'm debt free! Yeah! <laughs> That's how that's done. Boom! Scripture of the day, Isaiah 41, 10. Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Eleanor Roosevelt said, do one thing every day that scares you. There you go. Every time I'm on the air with you, Dave. (laughs) Every time you're on the air with me. There you go. (laughs) (laughs) Hey, and by the way, the last time I was on the show, I was with Rachel. Oh, no. And I'm glad you prefaced this with the scripture of the day um this the you know there's a bunch of different segments here and i didn't realize what segment we were on the last one and all of a sudden rachel starts talking in this old isaiah old testament language and i heard if you ever feel sad and and i was like what's happening to rachel's brain and i started to turn quietly and look and i didn't know what's happening and then i realized she was reading the scripture of the day was fantastic so thank you for prefacing for everybody uh-huh. I thought we were losing a patient. Yeah, it could happen. Bill's in Scranton, Pennsylvania. Hey, Bill, what's up? Hey, Dave. Thanks for taking my call. Um, my question is, um, my wife and I have been in Baby Step 3B for almost two years. Uh, in that time, we've been in the same home. We've had a second child. And, you know, the reason for being in 3B was because our house was getting too small. But after all this time, we've kind of decided that we, we're going to stay with where we're at and looking at the route of putting on an addition. During that time, we've uh, saved up roughly $70,000, and we have about 
uh, 150 of equity in our current home that, you know, now that we're not selling, we're, I'm assuming we don't have access to. So just looking to see when can we, what, what's our best step to get that, make that home renovation in addition? And when can we start? What are you going to spend on the addition? Six? Uh, well, we figure the addition would be roughly about $130,000. Okay. Two story. All right. What's your household income? Uh, my wife and I one hundred fifty thousand dollars. And what's the home currently worth today? Um, roughly three hundred. Okay. So, what do homes on your street generally sell for? So we have one of the smaller homes in our neighborhood in our street, um, but houses range from three fifty to four fifty. And um, you said your current home is worth three hundred. Right, with this, you know, with, with, in, with the market today. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Okay. I, I would not renovate it. I would sell it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, that's what we were, our original idea was yeah. two years ago. It's a better idea. The, uh, Here's why. Okay. You're going to spend two years of your life in hell. That's called a renovation. <laughs> it's purgatory. Mm-hmm. It's right next door to hell. And um, it's not hell, but you can see it from there. And you can hear it. Yeah. And, um... On top of that, when you finish, if you do a good job with the design, and that's most of the time a big if, because you're getting ready to change this home by 30 to 40% of its structure. Right. Uh, that's such a large renovation that's almost like building a house. And the chances of you doing that with good architectural, when you're done, the house isn't just weird, is fairly low. It's very hard to do what you're doing well, very hard. Um, And if you do it well, and it all comes out perfect after you go through the two years of hell, now you have the most expensive house in the neighborhood, which is never where you want to be, at the top of the market. So if I woke up in your shoes, I would sell that sucker. And I would go buy a house that's got the stuff in it you want in a neighborhood where you're in the middle or the bottom half of the price range, where you can get the most future appreciation take the equity out of your house and the 70,000 put it down take out a 15 year fixed rate where the payments no more than the fourth of your take home pay and I would move to a 450 or 500 thousand dollar house you make enough money to do that with a 220 thousand dollar down payment for sure and um, guess what you don't have to go through two years of hell Um, because I gotta tell you man building a house is difficult building a house while you're living in it is grounds for divorce. <laughs> I mean, it's just, it's, it's, jeez, we can have a big fight hanging curtain rods. Building a whole house, no. No. I would not do it. I, I would not do it. I, I, I am, am I, am I being clear about advising against this? Before we, before we go to this next caller, what are your thoughts on renovating a home, Dave? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, sell your house, man. You know, I'll tell you, I'll tell you the other thing is I we've done light renovations a couple mm-hmm. times. Like while we were gone on a two-week trip or something, they would come in and tear out a wall and redo a bedroom and change the carpet out and put hardwoods down and something like that. I mean, you know, but, you know, some substantial renovations, but not, not major knockout entire things where you have to move out of the house kind of crap. And... Um, you know what happens about six or eight months after I finish that? We move. Uh, <laughs> I yeah, love it. Yeah, I just, I have, I have a, yeah, I have a thing. All right, Brendan's with us in Idaho Falls. Hi, Brendan. How are you? Hi, doing well. Good. How can we help? Uh, my family is preparing to move overseas in a little over a year. Uh, what should we do now with our possessions? Should we start selling things or look into long-term storage? What do you want to do with them? Um, probably store them. Okay. Why? Why? What, what? What is so valuable about that couch? Oh yeah, probably not the couch, but just a few bigger possessions, I guess. <laughs> okay. Well, I mean, there's there's two categories of possessions. There's garage sale crap that you're about to pay money mm-hmm. to store that you should have sold. And then there are things that are family heirlooms or keepsakes that you would never want to get rid of for any price. Of course. But I wouldn't pay storage fees for 
a used couch or a kitchen kitchen table just get you another one later unless it was grandma's kitchen table dude i did that one time man i put a couch in storage when i was in an apartment and a year later that guy at 50 bucks a month i realized i'd paid 600 i mean i paid more than a new couch was worth back then it was so ridiculous man Uh, i would pare my stuff down as bare minimum as you can and get rid of it and if you have a few things that are legacy pieces then yeah hang on to those yeah yeah or stuff that you you know that that you well, I mean, there there needs to be a real reason that it can't be replaced with a better one, newer one, when you get back. How long are you going to be gone? Uh, at least five years. Are you going on the mission field or what? Uh, just working, uh, doing higher education. Yeah. Overseas. What, what are you thinking about storing? What What do you want to keep? A few vehicles, uh, things that would be a little difficult to get right immediately once we move back. Don't, don't. Keep a car in storage for five years unless it's a classic. It'll depreciate out from under you. Sell it, man. Gotcha. Uh, the car that you have now, how old is it? Uh, 2010. Okay. So it's already 12 years old. Mm-hmm. And when, when you go back, it'll be 17-year-old car. Yep. That is not a – no. Yeah, sell it, man. Sell that. No. Sell that for sure. Okay. It, there's no, there's no if there's not a sentimental a deep sentimental hold on something. There's going to be very few things in your household that are not going to be ridiculously outdated when you come back in five years. Five years in our world of rapid change is an eternity. Mm-hmm. I mean, can you imagine getting a TV out of storage that was 10 years old? Have you seen five-year-old pictures of yourself, Dave? <laughs> well, five-year-old pictures of me look about the same. But, <laughs> but yeah, that's the thing. I mean, five-year-old pictures of your kids. I mean, things change. The, your five-year-old cell phone. I mean, anything. Like, it, everything is – five years is ancient for most things. No, I would not hardly keep anything here. But here's an important thing. Have some money so that when you when you start planning on your return – Put some money away so that you, like a, with a sinking fund, so that you can walk um, land here and go buy a car. Yeah, right? I mean, take the money from your cars and stuff and park the money. The yeah. money can sit there; it won't deteriorate. Um, assuming you don't put it in Bitcoin. I mean, but other than that, it's going <laughs> to it's going to go up and go. Don't buy gold with it, but you know, put it in a savings account. It'll be there when you get back and buy another car, yeah. and um, you'll be pretty close on that. Good show, John. Thanks for hanging out. Well done, Will, Austin, Ben, Zach, Andrew, James in the booth. I am Dave Ramsey, your host. We'll be back with you before you know it. In the meantime, remember, there's ultimately only one way to financial peace, and that's to walk daily with the Prince of Peace, Christ Jesus. Dave here. You can find all of our shows with the Ramsey Network app on your smartphone. It's the only place to listen to the entire back catalog of episodes. Download the Ramsey Network app in your favorite app store today.